morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, I'll be covering a severe weather outbreak with very large hail, strong winds, and tornadoes possible across the Mississippi Valley today, and then a late season snowstorm this weekend across the upper Midwest and Great Lakes regions. We'll detail how much snowfall you can expect across those areas in this video, and then an intense storm next week could bring another snowstorm and more severe weather across parts of the country. We detail the, we'll detail those areas later on in today's video. But going back to yesterday, we did have some severe weather up here across the Central Plains, all the way up into the Omaha region and back down into Wichita, Kansas. We had 22 wind reports, 26 hail reports for, for a total of 48 severe weather reports on Friday. But as we go into today, that same storm system and cold front are going to start to slowly move off to the east. And we have a deep warm sector with this system here. You see temperatures ahead of the front into the 80s all the way up into the Chicagoland area, middle 70s on up here into Wisconsin. And then that sharp cold front bringing those cooler temperatures back across the north central plains. We're back down in the 40s and 50s here from the Dakotas back into Minnesota and even down into portions of Nebraska and western Iowa throughout the day today. But with that warm sector, we are going to be seeing a severe weather outbreak. The Storm Prediction Center has maintained a level 3 of 5, an enhanced risk for severe storms across much of Missouri, southwestern Illinois. This includes the St. Louis area. Getting down into central portions of Arkansas, this does include Little Rock. And then all the way down into northern portions of Louisiana, that's into the Shreveport area. And then you see a widespread dark green and yellow shaded colors. Those are lower end probabilities for severe weather in that actually extends up into central Wisconsin toward the Green Bay area as we go through the day today. So looking at the individual hazards, what these storms could bring to the table, we could be seeing some widespread damaging winds up to 60, perhaps 70 miles per hour especially in these yellow and red shaded colors here from portions of Missouri, southwestern Illinois, down into Arkansas, and northern Louisiana in particular. And then that's also the area we could be seeing some very large hailstones over two inches in diameter over golf ball size. Again, across Missouri, getting down into central portions of Arkansas, including the Little Rock region, getting into northern portions of Louisiana into the Shreveport area, and then even back into northeast Texas here toward Texarkana, we definitely could be talking about some very large hailstones as well. And we also have a tornado threat. We have a 2% shading of tornadoes here in the green shaded color and a 5% shading in the brown shaded color here. This includes southwestern Illinois, Missouri, portions there of Arkansas, and down into northern Louisiana, again, encompassing the Little Rock area, getting up into Springfield, Missouri, St. Louis area. Those are the areas to watch out for all three modes of severe weather, including tornadoes today. So the setup for this, we have a pretty potent jet stream here in the mid-levels that's back up in the 500 millibar layer that is actually rounding the base of a strengthening trough. The trough today will be neutrally tilted, and we have a pretty robust low-level jet that's going to increase the low-level shear needed for tornadoes later on today. And then also another ingredient you need for severe weather is moisture. The dew points will be rising into the 50s and 60s all across the Missouri Valley today with the higher dew points into the the middle 60s or higher farther south into the Arklatex and the lower Mississippi Valley. And that's going to contribute to what we call CAPE, or Convective Available Potential Energy, or instability for short. And that's going to be higher again across that enhanced risk area with some instability farther north into Wisconsin, northern Illinois, eastern Iowa, but not as strong up in those areas with some cloud cover and some cooler temperatures. So looking here this afternoon, 1 o'clock, we got a few thunderstorms firing up across western Wisconsin, eastern Iowa there into northern Missouri. These ones could be producing some hail. Other other than that, not seeing too much in the way of severe weather. It's really by 4 o'clock we'll start to fire up a few scattered showers and storms up here across the Davenport Quad Cities, getting back down into the Kirksville, Missouri area and in northeast Missouri. These storms could become a little bit more surface rooted by mid to late afternoon. Could be producing some damaging wind gusts, also some large hail, maybe an isolated tornado. Then it's really toward the dinner time frame, into the early evening around 7 o'clock, we're going to start to see a squall line of storms quickly develop along that cold front here and it should have no problem with no capping inversion in place so we'll have some damaging straight line winds uh, that could be widespread and also some large hail that could be very large over two inches in diameter 
and a couple of embedded tornadoes along the leading edge of that line and that will surge east across the Mississippi Valley from Illinois down through portions there in Missouri, Arkansas even into Louisiana through late this evening and that will slowly fall apart from west to east as it approaches the western Ohio Valley and the middle Tennessee Valley after midnight by 3 a.m. on Sunday. Then as we go into Sunday that cold front will surge farther east. That warm sector will also move across the Ohio Valley, the mid-Atlantic all the way up into the north east here parts of the southeast we're going to see that warm sector reach that's where we could be seeing some severe weather now it's a lower threat on sunday and it's a marginal risk a level one of five but this does include michigan here including detroit lansing grand rapids it's kalamazoo areas up here getting down into parts of Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky here, the Carolinas, Virginia, down into South Carolina, again, into portions of Georgia, southeastern Alabama, and much of the state of Florida. And this trough will become negatively tilted on Sunday. So with a negatively tilted trough, it does strengthen the severe weather threat, but the caveat here to a more impressive severe weather setup, regardless of the neutral tilt to the trough, will be the lack of moisture. Dew points will only be in the 40s and 50s and that's only going to contribute to modest cape values or instability across the mid-atlantic the northeast or the east coast here with the stronger values that really aren't that strong at all into georgia and portions of florida that are around 1000 1500 joules per kilogram and again during the afternoon on sunday we could be seeing some showers and storms isolated to widely scattered they will pick up a coverage and intensity a little bit toward peak daytime heating four o'clock in the afternoon across portions of Michigan there, Ohio getting down through West Virginia, the Carolinas, Virginia, even here a couple storms firing up into Georgia and Florida, and those will start to move eastward toward Pennsylvania, western New York State, again getting down through portions of Maryland there, Virginia, the Carolinas as we go through later on Sunday evening at 10 o'clock. But this storm system overall through the weekend into early next week, regardless of if you see a severe thunderstorm or not, will be producing some heavy rainfall, some Make no mistake about it, if you live across the Midwest here, the Great Lakes, all the way down the Mississippi Valley here to New Orleans, we could even be talking about a widespread one to three inches worth of rain with the heaviest amounts across southern portions of Louisiana, southern Mississippi, into southern Alabama through that Monday the 17th time frame. And that's exactly where we see that slight risk for flash flooding here across those areas for New Orleans, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and getting into the Mobile Alabama region, but we're also seeing that flooding threat extending up the Mississippi Valley all the way up into Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin here. And then in a little area up here into the mid-Atlantic across portions of the Pennsylvania and New Jersey and southern New York State will have to be watching out for some flooding through today into your Sunday time frame. Also on Sunday, we're going to be watching the back edge of this system. We're going to be wrapping in some cooler temperatures. These are your low-level temperatures, just a couple thousand feet above our heads. And it's really going to be wrapping up some cooler air here. These are near-surface temperatures now by Sunday evening. And you see them getting down into the upper 20s, if not low 30s. So they will be marginal for snowfall, but just enough to have a mix of rain and snow or possibly some dynamic cooling with this system to get all snow, especially in eastern Iowa, western Illinois here. By the time we get into 7 o'clock on Sunday evening, that will continue through much of the evening hours and even after midnight going into Monday morning, that snowfall will become more prevalent across Wisconsin there, eastern Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, and the northern parts of Illinois, and this include, could include the Chicago area, Madison, Wisconsin, La Crosse, Prairie du Chien, and then getting up into Eau Claire, Wisconsin after midnight there and getting into Monday morning. And looking at the total snowfall accumulation from Sunday into Monday, we could be seeing some decent totals. Now, again, not all these accumulations will be realized as the higher sun angle here on, on, in April and the warmer ground temperatures as we have, you know, the past few days into the 80s. It will take time for a lot of the snowfall to overcome that. But I I do think when it's all said and done, a coating to two inches and anywhere in this blue shaded color is possible to accumulate, especially on grassy surfaces. And then two to four inches of snow will be possible across northwestern Wisconsin, southeastern Minnesota, getting into parts of eastern and northeastern Iowa there, especially near the Mississippi River. And that could be especially on grassy surfaces. So there definitely could be at least some light shoveling in a few spots, but definitely a sight to see late April. 
April, a late season snowstorm across those areas, and that will shift eastward with the rain across the northeast on Monday. And again, we're still seeing a mix of rain and snow or all snow across the western Great Lakes through the day on Monday, especially Monday morning. And then behind the system, we're going to be talking about colder temperatures. So we just mentioned how the back edge of the system has the colder temperatures wrapping in with the snowfall. Well, behind the storm, as it exits, these temperatures will be a good 10, 20, even 25 degrees below normal for this time of year on Monday, April 17th. That will carry over into Tuesday, April 18th across the special especially the Great Lakes, southeastern Canada into the northeast. And then eventually we'll start to see return flow across the Great Plains on Tuesday, leading to temperatures up to 25 degrees above normal across those areas into Nebraska, Kansas, western Oklahoma, into the Texas Panhandle, and maybe as far north as South Dakota during the early portion of next week. So you see on Monday, the cooler temperatures are more prevalent, 30s and 40s across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes here cooling off ever so slightly into the northeast, but we have that return flow already starting on Monday across the southern plains, and that will become a little more prevalent as you see those overnight lows only getting into the upper 50s to near 60 down here into the southern plains Monday night, but the upper Midwest, we're going to be down into the upper teens and low 20s across North Dakota, Minnesota, much of Wisconsin there, northeastern Iowa, and northern Illinois. That could extend over into the UP of Michigan and at least parts of uh, lower Michigan here as well getting into Monday night. And then Tuesday, like I said, that southerly flow does return ahead of our next storm system and more 80s are likely, especially into western Kansas, western Oklahoma, into the Texas Panhandle with maybe 85 degrees across places there like the Amarillo and Lubbock, Texas regions by Tuesday afternoon. And like I mentioned, that's ahead of our next storm system. We got another trough digging in, a pretty significant trough as well across the northwestern United States on Tuesday. That will continue you on Wednesday. And what this will do is with the colder air aloft, we'll have a lot of snowfall, especially in those higher elevations. So definitely get ready for more of the snowfall across portions of Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, much of western Montana, western Wyoming, maybe northern portions of California and Nevada as well on Tuesday. And then much of those same areas will see at least some lighter snow showers as you go up in elevation during the middle of next week on Wednesday. You do notice downstream, we do see a couple of showers and storms likely not severe Wednesday afternoon, just mainly some garden variety type of storms um, across Iowa, getting into southern Minnesota, all the way down into portions of the Arklatex. But you do see the snowfall, though. So as it adds up across the Pacific Northwest, especially those higher elevations, we could certainly be seeing over six inches of accumulation into western Montana there, into portions of central Idaho, western Wyoming, uh, northern portions of Utah near the Salt Lake City area, northern Nevada maybe getting a couple inches, parts of the Sierra Nevadas out here even getting a couple inches of snow and that could extend to the higher elevations of Oregon, Washington State, and even on up here into British Columbia, Canada during that Tuesday into Wednesday time frame early and middle portion of next week. But as we go into Wednesday, that trough, the nose of that mid-level jet will start to sneak in across the western Great Plains and that's when we start to see more moisture transport from the Gulf of Mexico. Dew points will be back in the 60s as far north as Kansas City and with that dry line moving in by Wednesday night, there'll probably be enough lift up here with the low pressure system across Nebraska, uh, Iowa, getting into northern Illinois, southwest Wisconsin for more of elevated type of thunderstorms. A few of these could be feisty. We could be seeing some hail producers up here uh, with that warm front by Wednesday night. That could linger into Thursday morning. Uh, again, if we see any severe weather out of this, this will likely be just some quarter size hail with those elevated thunderstorms. But then as we go into Thursday, the 20th, late next week, that trough will start to eject from the Central Plains on up here into the Great Lakes region and actually deepen quite rapidly through the day on Friday, April 21st. And as it does so, it's going to be pulling a strong mid-level jet with it on the base of the trough on Thursday. And you can see a well-defined dry line with dew point temperatures in the 20s and 30s behind that back across the Great Plains. But those 60 degree dew points will start to march northward into central portions of Illinois. Maybe some mid-60 dew points down here into the Arklatex and even 70 degree dew points across coastal Texas and Louisiana by Thursday afternoon. And with that said, six days out, the Storm Prediction Center is already confident for severe storms across southern Missouri, much of Arkansas 
Arkansas again with the Little Rock area, Jonesboro, and maybe up here near the Springfield region in towards Missouri for severe weather on Thursday with that slight risk. That's a level two of five. And then you see Thursday afternoon with that dry line, that cold front, we could be seeing some scattered supercells with all modes of severe weather, likely with damaging winds, large hail, and maybe a few tornadoes that will start to push eastward, probably turning more into a heavy rain and damaging wind threat Thursday evening across the Illinois Valley, getting down into the Arklatex, and that slowly progresses farther east and kind of loses its, uh, its oomph across the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valley down here as we go through Thursday night. But you do notice on the northwest side, I, unfortunately, many of the same areas that have seen snow all season will see yet an, again another late season snowstorm across the Dakotas into central Minnesota, including the Twin Cities region and portions of northern Wisconsin by Thursday night into Friday. And you see Thursday afternoon, we are starting to pull in some marginally cold temperatures in the low levels, but we really start to strengthen this as we go into Thursday night and especially by Friday, especially Friday afternoon, we're really going to start to pull in some colder temperatures aloft. That will transpire here farther down to the surface and we're going to see some potential snowfall accumulations that could be significant up here for this time of year, especially across the Dakotas getting into central Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. Now, don't take these uh, snowfall accumulations and etch them in stone. These uh, snowfall accumulations could change, but I definitely think a rather significant snowstorm is possible with maybe up to six inches of snow at least in some areas here getting into late uh, week next week across the Dakotas, Minnesota, and northern Wisconsin. But then after that system goes by, we're going to see another cool down. Winter is not done yet. Believe it or not, we're going to see another drop in our temperatures late next weekend, and that's going to actually start to bring down some colder, colder temperatures again for this time of year. This is Friday, April 21st, and you see these temperature anomalies 10, 20 degrees below normal across the northern United States, but that is a cold front that will dive all the way south across the eastern two-thirds of the country, arriving across the Gulf Coast by Sunday, April 23rd, late next weekend. And here's what these temperatures look like. So these are our preliminary temperatures. These could change a little bit in the coming days. But here, looking at Friday afternoon on the 21st, we'll see some upper uh, 30s, low 40s up here across the Midwest and the Northern Plains regions with the warmer air initially across the south. But as we go into Saturday, you see that cold front moving south here and we're back to the 40s and 50s even down here in the Dallas Fort Worth area down to 63 Saturday afternoon 57 in Oklahoma City 51 in St. Louis 42 in Chicago and then look at this on Saturday night we're going to be well below freezing a very hard freeze up here across the Dakotas getting down into portions of Minnesota Wisconsin a lot of these areas could be in the 20s even if not the teens for lows on Saturday night next weekend and then we're only going going to recover back to the 30s up here in the Dakotas and parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the 40s farther south from there into the Missouri Valley as we go into next Sunday on the 23rd. So definitely if you guys are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, be sure you subscribe to the channel down below after watching it here. Uh, you get daily weather forecast updates each and every morning at 9 a.m. on this channel. I cover, uh, cover southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics. And also don't forget to press the like button down below. Hit the thumbs up button. Definitely helps out to get as many people as possible to view this video with all the information in it as well. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, additional weather forecast updates here on the, my Twitter page periodically throughout the week. Follow me down below, hit the description. Click on it and follow me at HWeather420. You guys get additional weather forecast updates on Twitter, again, periodically throughout the week as well. Well, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Again, remember to like the video down below, pressing the thumbs up button. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great weekend, everybody. A great Saturday, and I will see you all in the next video.